Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Paleoettes. Today we're talking about the goof, uh, which is the body. This chapter is a relatively short chapter, but I gotta tell you, I'm kind of excited for the next one. The next chapter coming up is a very exciting chapter and it deals with grooming. Very interesting stuff, very interesting stuff. You always wonder why sometimes the, you know, the rabbis that give you this kind of advice when it comes to your nails and things like that. And you're like, what? Well, what's the big deal? Why, you know? It's very interesting uh, where some of this stuff uh, originates from and why the advice is as such. Uh, but we're going to stick with the body today. We're going to get right into it. It says the body relative to the soul is considered as non-existent and less than nothingness. It is proper for every intelligent person to deprive his body and encumber it with all kinds of burdens in order to purify his soul and provide satisfaction for his creator. He should not have pity on his body at all in in at all in situations wherever the honor of uh, Shemaim is at stake. He should keep his body healthy and strong in order to perform his service, the duty of a, and that's the duty of a servant. So now anyone that's followed me in, in Kosher 2.0 or has come out to any of the live shirim, you know, I, I gave this analogous about the body in that um, imagine for a moment that you had a friend or you were the friend who had an extra car and your friend came to you and said that they needed this car in order to perform errands that they normally would not be able to do uh, due to the fact that they had no way of getting around to do them. And so you agree to, you know, lend them the car and you either see or you hear that the car has been spotted in very bad shape. Uh, instead of putting the, you know, premium gasoline that you required, they're putting in this unleaded or hasfashalom, you know how some people get crazy with these, uh, maybe they were putting Crisco, like all the wrong things. And the car is like trash and the inside is dirty. This is the same thing uh, that we do when we're talking about our body, when we're putting in the wrong kinds of food on a constant basis. And that's not to say you can't cheat. Lord knows I cheat. Hashem will tell you, you know, he'll put me up right on blast. But constant cheating, not taking care of your body, uh, this is the only way that we have to do the mitzvot. And it is on loan to us. The body, it, it, this is not our body. It is on loan to us. So you have to imagine that this is the same way that Hashem is looking at us and the treatment of our body, which as you know, many people, they die before their time because they do not take care of their body. And this is the only thing we have to get around and to perform the mitzvot. So for sure, you know, pop over to any of the Kosher 2.0 um, lectures and you, you'll start to see uh, how everything works in tandem and how even having one thing off will start to throw everything else out of alignment. Um, but we're going to continue on. It says, our, our eyes see that every man will endure all kinds of monetary and physical suffering with the consolation that it is less than death and prevents death from approaching him. If a person is, is so concerned about the departure of his soul from his body, even if a person will live for many years, ultimately he will die. How much more so must he be concerned about the punishment of his soul in Alamaba, which is bitter than death? The truth, uh, a person would not be apprehensive about the separation of the soul from the body if he knew that he was going to walk with God in the land of the living. And this is a euphemism for the world to come. And it says the only thing that he should be concerned about is that through the connection of the soul and the body, he can achieve the highest path of life and avoid the nether world. In conclusion, a man must be willing to give everything that he possesses, both his body and his money for the sake of his soul, just like he would give it all and not be killed. This is the whole of a man. However, a person whom God has grace with intelligence to love God in truth as is befitting his soul will also be prepared to sacrifice his life for the sanctification of Hashem to the extent that if it were possible that one who serves God inherits Gehinom and one who commits sins inherit Gan Eden, which is permiss imp impossible, he would agree to inherit Gehinom, descend into the pit of destruction and have his soul consumed by fire and made into ashes in order to provide gratification for his creator. This is our obligation and the most proper thing for us. Who is the wise man who truly compre comprehends this? Uh, so right in that statement, uh, who is the wise man who will comprehend this? You know, 
Uh, Shem's ways are not our ways. I think that the more that we start to delve in and to dive um, into the study of what the sages say, the more that we purify and fix our own mido, you'll start to see um, that this world isn't really what you think it is. Um, and your, your, your purpose here is not always what you think it is either. Um, you know, I think that we all hope and want this life where we're, you know, I think, I think for many of us, I, I think we're not even asking for the lap of luxury. I think we're just asking that we have no pain, no suffering. Um, but that is not the way to Ulama Ba, and as hard as that is to hear. And again, this is why it says Hashem's ways is not our ways. Um, but this requires a deep study. And for many people, it's not something that you can just take in and digest on the first time hearing it, especially if you're going through something very difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, for a lot of times, in a lot of ways, for us to understand the circumstances that we're going through. Um, but there is a happy ending to it all, and Hashem's salvation can come in an instant. So it says, Yet yeah, we must do that which is within our ability and the scope of our understanding. We must not have pity on our bodies, and by thus restraining ourselves, we provide satisfaction for our Creator. The Lord our God will help us. Amen. You know, it's funny, there was a story I heard a while ago about some of the rabbis that they would put like rocks in their shoes, believe it or not, just so that they wouldn't have comfort, um, that they would have some kind of uh, physical suffering. And you hear many stories about, you know, how some of them would have these homes that look very poor. And, you know, a lot of, I think, and, and you know, I think sometimes we see that even now. We see people, um, you know, very righteous people who live um, like beyond the extremes of humbleness. Their, their, their houses are very modest. And a lot of times I think, you know, we, we want to rush in and go in and say, you know, let's do, let's do a, a chesed and let's, you know, chip in and all get the rev a, a nice house, a, a new this, a new car. And, you know, we're, a lot of times we're saying to them, like, how can they, you know, I feel so bad. How can they live like this? And the truth is, actually, they, they've got it. They, they understand what it is to deprive themselves in order for the sake of Hashem. Um, I think they get it more than many of us do that they understand their reward is in Allah Maba and they're not getting attached to physical things. And lo and behold, it's them who's looking at us and say, oi, 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 how can they live like this? How can they live with all these things that are just constantly vying for their attention from Hashem. And, uh, you know, let's not fool ourselves. These things quite successfully, they take our attention off of, of Hashem. And we are always looking to make our lives a little bit easier. So this is a very difficult concept, I think, for this generation especially. Uh, the concept of self-sacrifice. And I've said it before in another shear, and I'll repeat myself. Um, so forgive me for those of you who've heard it, but I've said before that it doesn't really take much to be great in this generation because of the fact that we, we just refuse. We will refuse to do anything uh, that requires any kind of sacrifice for ourselves and we refuse to go through any hardship. Um, and I think that, you know, I think we're all going to go through hardship whether we want to or not, but I think that sometimes our attitude when we're going through it, mine especially, um, is one that, uh, you know, it doesn't, it's like, I don't want to go through it. And I'm going to complain all the way, all the way through. Um, this is a really big issue in our generation. But like I said, this is the reason why it doesn't really take much to be great in this generation. We're such a low generation. It really doesn't take much. Um, so, but nevertheless, it is a difficult concept, uh, to learn. Um, especially if you're Jewish, if you're Jewish, 100% you already know your life is oi uh, vavoy to be a Jew, right? But that is why we get the biggest reward in the Lama Ba. So um, that's it. You know, that's it for today. Remember to keep, uh, keep a lookout for the next one. Very interesting. Um, very interesting. I don't know. This book, uh, they have, it's a lot of good advice for your practical living. Um, and some, some nuggets are harder to swallow and some are just easier and some are like, yeah, that, you know, that's exactly what I'm going through. But, uh, nevertheless, uh, it's all for good. 
and it'll all be for good. So that's it for today, and I hope we'll all be together again soon. Be'ezrat Hashem.